Hi, I'm Miss Tadette, and this is Lesson 15. Today we're going to take uh, what we've been learning in Lessons probably 2 through 14 and put it all together and put it into a game. Uh, the game is called Kaboom, and you may have played it uh, at your school, um, perhaps in math or in reading. But today we're going to do it with words, so it'll be a reading phonics type activity. So supplies that you're going to need, um, these. These were uh, some disinfecting wipes. They're all gone. It's empty. It's been cleaned out. So if you have a container like this around your house, you could use this. If not, some other kind of container that you can put it in. This is just my favorite thing to use because uh, what you can do, you can just take the lid off and use it. Or you can um, take this part if someone in your house, like um, a grown-up, uh, could cut that out for you then it makes an opening then this could stay on and it keeps all your supplies in there And then you're gonna need some craft sticks. So craft sticks look like popsicle sticks You're gonna need those and then I prefer a sharpie type marker doesn't matter what color But it is easier to write with on the craft stick. So supplies today you need some sort of container like I said I prefer this and um, craft sticks Sharpie and then I'm going to use a piece of paper and I'm going to replace this label that's on my container and I'm going to put a new label on it. So you can see my paper is larger than my container. So I'm going to take this label off. I'm going to measure it on here, cut it, and put a new label on mine. So you get us supplies. I'll get my stuff ready and I'll be right back. Okay, did you find some supplies? <laughs> I also had to use some tape because uh, I needed to tape my label on here since I took my other one off I just ripped right off and then I put this paper around my container now I'm just going to quickly put some letters on here I'm going to say kaboom on mine you spell it k-a-b-o-o-m and I'm just going to do like some swirlies you could print something out on the computer but mine just quickly kaboom kaboom all right so what we're going to do now we're gonna go back to the beginning. In the beginning, we talked about letters, then we talked about sounds, and then the first thing we did is we made CVC words. So today, we're gonna to put some CVC words on the sticks. So with your marker, and like I said, I prefer a Sharpie marker, one with a nice fine uh, point tip on there. You're gonna write some CVC words on your popsicle sticks. So the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do cap. Now, I hear k a. If I hear the a, ah, do you remember what the k is before it? Do you remember the rule? Okay, C before A, O, U, or a consonant. So I hear a, ah, that is an A, so it begins with a C. So I'm gonna go C, A, P. Now remember when you're writing, you write from the left to the right and you start top down. So I went C and I started at the top and I curved around. So I'm gonna put cap on here and then I'm gonna put my stick in the bucket. What you want to do is you want to make about 10 CVC words using different vowels in the middle position and different beginning uh, sounds and ending sounds. So I'll do dog. I'll start at the top, go straight down, bump up, curve around to get my D, then my O at the top and curve around, and my G start at the top, curve around, and go down and put this little tail on there so that I have dog on there. All right, dog, and I'm gonna drop it in there. Uh, what about, we've used A, we've used O, let's use U, let's do pup. So it's gonna begin with what letter? All right, P, and these are lowercase letters. Make sure you're using lowercase because none of these are proper nouns. So pup, we're gonna put it in there. So we need one for our I. Can you think of one for I? How about a K sound at the beginning? If I put a K, before an I, what does it have to be? All right, K before E, I, or Y. So I'm gonna start with a K, straight down, then kick out and kick out, and then straight down for my I, put on the dot, and then straight down for my T, kit. I spelled the word kit, K it. All right, so we're gonna keep on going. If you need to pause, uh, pause and come up with your own words, you can, or you can just keep following along with me. Uh, let's do another one. We're gonna do um, run. What's that? R. Mm -hmm. uh, you. Mm, in. Good. All right, so we have run. 
I can throw man in there. Mm, uh, mm, always left to right, top down, man. What about let? Let. You know, you don't have to do the exact words that I'm doing. You can come up with words of, on your own that you want to do as long as there's CVC, which is consonant, vowel, consonant. And you want to get about 10 CVC words in there. Okay, so it uh, looks like we have about seven, so we'll do three more. Uh, how about nut? Nut. So we'll do mm, uh, t. All right. Did you get that one? N U T. Nut. Nut. And we'll grab another one. We'll do jug. J. Uh, g. Okay. J. Ug. That one. And then let's do. Something else, what can we do? Um, I'm trying to think if it's different. Let's do, oh, this is a different one. Let's do yes. That's one we haven't done. So, yeah, my beginning sound would be what? Y, E, E, and then yes. And what's the ending sound? S. Yes. Okay. Great job. The next skill that we worked on, we worked on words that had a short vowel that ended with a k. So what's the rule? When you hear a short vowel and a k, it's always what? C, K. So we're going to put digraph C, K at the end of these words. So we can put blends in the beginning or we can just do a constant, then a vowel, then the C, K. We can have a lot of choices here. So let's do the word. Let's start with a blend. We'll start off a little hard. Let's start with clock. All. Ooh, I love it. All sorts of rules in this word. We heard a k, then all. What's the rule? C before A, O, U, or a consonant. I heard a all. That's a consonant, so it has to start with the letter C. All right, so we're going to C, L, A. Uh, what vowel is that? A, uh, O. And then I remember when you hear a short vowel and a k, it's always C, K. Let's get that written on there. So your word I didn't mean to make my C so big. I think I just started big. It's not a capital C. It's all lowercase. So I know that looks a little large there, but it's all lowercase letters. It's not starting a sentence. It's not a proper noun right now. It's just a word on a stick, and they all should be the same lowercase letter. Mine's just a little big there. All right, so we have clock. Let's do um, sack. That one's easy because you hear a constant and a vowel and a k sack. Can you get it on there? You put it on there when I put it on there, then let's check. Remember, all lowercase letters, so I'll try to do better about getting mine to look all exactly the same size. Did you get it? Sack. Sack. All right. All right, so I'm going to pause. We have two in there. We want to make eight more. I want you to see if you can think of some. I'll come back on and I'll show you mine. Uh, that way, in case you're stuck and can't think of some, you can see mine, but that way we don't take up the time watching me write all of these. Okay, I have my 10 uh, words that end with CK written. Yours may be different than mine, that's okay. I came up with smack, clock, sack, duck, tick, trick, sock. Block, truck, and last one, fleck. Okay, I realized that I did not have an E in there as I was going along. It's hard to think of a lot of E words that end with a K, or it was for me in the moment. All right, so we're going to take those 10, and we're going to put those inside our kaboom thing. Now, I'll put the word down. Anyway. All right, so we have 10 uh, CVC words, and we have 10 CK ending words. So how many do we have in there already? 20 because 10 plus 10 equals 20. All right, so the next vowel, uh, the next consonant digraph that we did after CK, we did, do you remember? We did a teacher's favorite digraph, which is 
SH. So now you want to get 10 more sticks out and you're going to want to put words that either begin or end with, with SH because CK, CK can only go at the end, but SH, that digraph can be at the beginning or the end. So I did one already. What's, what did I do? I did M, A, SH, NASH, or I could put it in the beginning and do SH, A, uh, So when you do your SH, you can put it in the beginning or you can put it in the end. Here are a couple of my examples. You can think of 10 on your own or you can use the ones that I do. So I'm gonna pause here and get my 10 written. And if you wanna do them on your own, you can. Then you can compare to see how your words match my words. Or if you wanna wait for me, then I'll be right back on and I'll show you my 10. Okay, I have 10 now. I already showed you shop and mash. So then I added this one. Has a blend in the beginning, t, r, tr, ash, trash, and then this one, k, ash. Now, I did this on purpose because I want to get that rule in your head that when you hear a k before a, o, u, or a consonant, it will always be a c. All right, k before e, i, r, y. This one was a really special word. I liked it. Can you tell why I liked it? There's a digraph in the beginning, then that short vowel, and then a digraph at the end. So you literally, you see a lot of letters, one, two, three, four, five, but you only hear three sounds because we hear shh, that's one sound. Ah, two sounds. K, sh, ah, k. But it has all those letters, and I think that's a really cool word. Shack. All right, then I made hush. And I made w, i, sh wish and sh ut shut sh ip ship and I like this one too because it had a blend it had the k rule and then it had digraph sh so this word excited me as well remember if you hear a k then a consonant c go c before a e oh my goodness c before a o u or a consonant. So even though that is an A there, it, we don't go there. It's before the consonant. The consonant is the first thing. So it's whatever's directly after that K sound. So C before A, O, U or a consonant and right there is that consonant. So we have K, R, A, SH, crash. So that was a special word. Even though it made my tongue twist up trying to get it out, it was a special word. All right, and then I think ship, shut, that gives us 10 words. If you did not get all uh, the 10 words, you can play me back and watch those and get them on there. Or if you did uh, 10 SH words on your own, that's fine too. So you're gonna take those 10 sticks, make sure the ends are all going the same way. Put your words that way and then put them into your container. Remember, if your container's different than mine, that's okay. So now we have 10, 10, and 10, three sets of 10. So how many words do we have in there? 10, 20, 30, okay. So after digraph SH, we did what digraph? The train sound, with a little hint in our story that got us there. Yeah, we did CH, the one that goes ch. Now CH, can, it can go at the beginning, it can go at the end, just like SH can. So we're gonna pull out 10 of our craft sticks and you're going to come up with 10 words that begin with CH or N. So you can do a mix, five and five or eight and two, whatever equals 10 that you wanna come up with, whatever combination. I'm going to pause the video and so when you come back, you can either copy down quickly my words or you can come up with your own CH words. It doesn't matter, as long as we just get 10 and get them in there. Okay, so I have my CH words done. My first one is ch -ek check. So when you remember, you hear a short vowel and then a k Always CK. I'm always repeating those rules because if I keep saying them, eventually it's gonna get stuck in your head. And I did ch at chat. And we have ch in chin. Ch app. Now remember, if you didn't do your CH words on your own, if you didn't think of 10 on your own and you're writing these as I'm going along, you're gonna have to pause because I'm going quickly. So we have and ch -op, chop, chop. This 
open it a little longer. It has the initial, then the vowel, then a consonant, then the CH. So you're gonna make each of the sounds. You're gonna go uh, lunch, lunch, lunch. And this one's a little bit shorter. Mm, uh, much. Now I'm gonna pull one down here. It's very similar to that one. Look at it. Can you tell what's different between those two? What is the difference? All right, this one has an extra consonant in it. So this is much, meaning having a lot of something. And this is munch. That one little letter changes that whole meaning of that word, munch. So uh, when you're eating a snack, munch, 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 munch. And sometimes you do this when you have a snack. You go crunch, crunch. Remember the rule, k -k. And in the initial position, A before, C before, A, O, U, or a consonant. I'm really having trouble with that rule today. C before, A, O, U, or a consonant. So that is a consonant right there. That R is a consonant. So C comes before the R. K, it's easier to remember that one. K before E, I, or Y. That one's really easy. I never mess that one up. All right, so we have K, R, unch, crunch. So we have to get each of those sounds in there. And then my last one was ch, ip, chip. So ended on the last one, an easy one. So those 10 are gonna go in there. Now I have four sets of 10 inside my Kaboom container. So if I have four sets of 10, how many do I have? 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. And you could do that by going 10, 20, 30, 40. We have 40 words in there. That's awesome. Okay, the next digraph that we did, do you know? TH. Now, how many sounds can TH make? TH can make two sounds, voiced and unvoiced. So, the unvoiced sound sounds like what? Your tongue sticks out. And the voiced sound sounds like what? Mm. Yeah, your tongue sticks out and it vibrates in there. Okay, so two sounds. So, let's do uh, five sticks of each, okay? Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna write my words on a piece of paper this time so that you can just see it because my sticks are getting low and I need the sticks to show you um, the other step. So I will put 10 TH words on a piece of paper and I will hold it up so you can see it and get those on your sticks if you're using my words or you can use your own TH words. Remember TH can be at the beginning, TH can be at the end, that initial or final position. It can go in, it can be voiced or unvoiced. So you can have a lot of creativity and make five uh, of each five voice, five unvoiced, so that's 10. If you don't wanna make it, just pause it, and uh, my words are gonna come up in just a second, okay? Okay, here are my TH words. Now, the reason why I didn't put all of these on a craft stick is because I'm down to just 10 craft sticks, and I need 20 craft sticks. So this lesson obviously will take 60 craft sticks, and my package just had 50 in it. So we're going to improvise here a little bit. Uh, my bucket will not have any TH words in it right now because um, I don't, I won't have enough sticks. But <clears throat> when I get some more sticks, I will add those in there because I want to give this project to my daughter. Uh, this will be something that she can use in her classroom. Uh, my TH words, remember they can be voiced or unvoiced. So I have th is, this, th at, that, so those two, were they voiced or unvoiced? Okay, they were voiced. And then we have with, math, voiced or unvoiced? Unvoiced, good. You guys are doing a good job at recognizing these now. Them and thin. All right, one was voiced, one was unvoiced. Now, thin, uh, that one is really tricky for a lot of kids because it almost sounds like this one that's underneath it, which is what? Then. So let's talk about these two words. If I were slicing a loaf of bread, I might say, do you want your bread to be sliced thin or thick? Okay. Thin. This is then. So it's an order word, a sequence word. First, then. Next, so if you're telling a story, you're gonna use then. This is how thick the size of something, okay? Thin, thin has an I, then has an E, eh. All right, so the next one we have is sloth, sloth. We have that blend, we hear both the S and the L sound in the initial position, 
sloth. And then mm, moth. And the final one. We briefly talked about twin consonants. For twin consonants, you don't make both sounds. You only make one sound. So we have ill. And this is the first example that I believe I've shown you where you have a blend next to a digraph in the initial position. So you're going to make your digraph sound, then your e, o, one l sound because twin consonants, you only hear uh, one sound. So you're going to learn about this twin consonant in the final position later. It's a really cool uh, rule. In fact, I may throw it in here next week to show you since we've been talking about it a little bit. So, if you uh, have been writing as we've been going along, then you've made 10 TH digraph uh, popsicle sticks. If you haven't, then pause the video and get these written down. So, I may be paused for some people. If not, I'm going to move on because with my final 10 sticks, I'm going to write and I'm going to put it in all caps going across here. I'm going to spell kaboom on 10 sticks. So if you have 10 sticks remaining, you need to take your marker and you're going to go all uppercase letters straight down and then kick out, kick out, and then A, uppercase B, then uppercase O, O, and then M in the final and you could like this, kaboom. Kaboom. You're going to drop them in there. You're going to make 10 sticks that say kaboom. I'm going to get those written. If you need to pause while you're getting your 10 kaboom sticks written, then you do so, and then we'll be right back. If not, we're going to keep on going. All right, so you have now how many? We have six sets of 10 in there. Six sets of 10, if you're paying attention, you knew that I didn't have enough. So six sets of 10, let's count it out. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Six sets of 10 is 60. We have 60 words in here. Now, some of these are good words, digraph words. C-K, S-H, C-H, T-H, C-V-C words, and some of these are kaboom. The game is gonna be played like this, uh, a timer. I love timers in my classroom. So you're going to set a 10-minute timer. This is going to be a 10-minute station that you're going to do with a partner. And you can do it with uh, three or four in a group. You would just go around like clockwise with your group. And you'd have someone that goes first, second, third, and fourth. Or it's just you and a partner. Uh, do it that way. But what happens, you're going to set a timer for 10 minutes. Decide who's going to go first. Probably the youngest person at the table goes first. Or teacher decides. And you pull out one. I hope I don't get a kaboom on my first one. But you pull out the stick and you read it. Wish. Your partner pulls out the stick, reads it. You get to pull out the stick. Oh, just one stick. And I have the word crash. I read it. Partner pulls out. Now, I'm going to look in here and because I need one. So it's my turn again. And I pull it out and I go to read it. And look what it says. It says... Kaboom. Oh no! Because when it says kaboom, I've got to put the kaboom stick plus my words that I've gotten right back in. That timer's counting down. Now it's your partner's turn. I have no sticks. My partner has three over there. It's back to my turn again. So I pull out another one and I keep reading. And this time I have a CVC word up. Up, and now it's my partner's turn. So you're going to play for 10 minutes, and every time that you get a kaboom, you have to put them in. When the timer goes off, count the sticks. Whoever has the most sticks is the winner. It's a fun way. It's a way that you can add, uh, as long as you don't run out of popsicle sticks, uh, you can keep adding to this kaboom. The next lesson that we do, um, if we do twin consonant lesson like I was talking about, then we can make popsicle sticks for the twin consonants. We can add it into the kaboom and that way it's always growing with your learning and it makes it uh, different words so that you can't always memorize what the words are in there. You can change it out, make new sticks. It's a fun game to play so I hope you've enjoyed making your kaboom today. That's it. Uh, Miss Danette, straight out of RTI. Bye-bye.